your boy B. It's your girl Z. And welcome to another episode of Pillow Talk with the Arijays. Yes. So today we're going to be talking about um, how we've built a successful life being together. Um, As you all probably know, um, we've been together since we were basically kids, like teenagers, um, early teens. Early teens, really early teens, 14 (laughs) years old, 15 years old. Um, So how did we create this um, life, a fortunate life um, for ourselves? Okay. Um, So First off, I just want to say how beautiful you look right now. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You look gorgeous. Your skin is glowing. Thank you. I hope it's just glowing because it's good skin and not nothing else, but... (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to throw it off, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 had uh Z's aunt and cousin come over yesterday and she mentioned that she thinks Z's pregnant, so I'm I mean a little, that's because I'm, I'm fat, not I'm because nervous. of anything else. But well, your face is glowing though. It's Amu Beauty. It's oh, not it's not like that. pregnancy beauty. glow. I got that. So I, I should have I should be a slogan or a saying like Are you pregnant? No, it's Amu Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> You guys it's actually it really first. funny. Yeah, you heard it first. You gotta write that down. But sorry, <laughs> sorry to throw it off topic. But uh, yeah, what were you saying? <laughs> um, why don't we start with um, our education, um, the path that we went down, and then just a quick like overview of that, yeah. and then um, how our how our how we grew together. Yeah. Um, I don't know how far we want to go back, but I will totally admit that I took school serious, but I was also on a path of destruction too as well. And I can get into that if, if that's something that's, that I mean, it's I wouldn't to say me. like con- destruction. I don't know. I was hanging you... around with some bad people. So I, 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 true, I, true, I true, have true, a feeling true. that if, if I were to continue hanging around with those bad true. people, yeah. I would probably end up in jail or dead or doing nothing with my life but anyways but you know just just to go back uh, my parents were serious with school and I took school serious too in high school I was a B plus A minus average Um, even though you know I would hang around with you know people I shouldn't be hanging around with but uh, and also doing sports and also doing everything else I also realized that school is very important, and that was literally embedded in my brain since I was little for my parents. Um, so I always took school serious. Um, then graduated from um, high school. I originally was going to go to this college upstate New York to pursue a, a field in automotive technician, and then I realized, because granted, cars is my passion, but then I came to realize, luckily, I came to realize that it's a hobby of mine, not a, a, a I didn't want it to be as a career, because I did, and I, <clears throat> sorry, I advise everyone to, to t- take an internship in a field that you're interested in, because you don't know what the actual experience is until you're actually in it in it so i did an internship at a car dealership and i just told myself there's no way in heck that i would see myself coming in five days a week working on someone else's issues granted <laughs> i work on my own issues because i, I mean, know that's not, i know what they are but. that's not to like undermine someone that does that for a living correct correct that's what i'm saying everyone has different passions right, for everything right. you know yeah. granted i had the passion to do it but it's just i just felt like i can do more um, but some, like I said, everyone has different passions. Some people love working on cars, no matter who they are. And they're are. extremely successful. Yes, doing extremely it. successful. I have a friend who did the same path um, that I was going to do, and he has his own shop now. 
and he's actually doing really, really, really good. So, um, yeah, I'm not undermining that 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 career path. It's just something I didn't see myself doing um, for the rest of my life. So, you know, last minute, sh- um, you know, all the deadlines for college application um, passed. So, I did two years at community college. Try and I, and I use that time to find myself, right? And I there's there's nothing against community college as long as you have a long term plan, and um, so yeah, I utilize that 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 area to find myself. I changed my major maybe four times in community college, um, and then and then I found myself back in IT. Um, and sorry, and to backtrack before I started college admissions, I was going to go into IT originally, but my mom said, oh no, all this job is going to India, Um, because you guys know how news can just, you know, uh, you know, fabricate, you know, news story, but, you know, little to know, it's just a certain aspect of IT that went to Nigeria, I mean, not Nigeria, uh, India, that they outsource. Um, But there's a lot of other fields in IT that you can pursue and be really successful. Um, That I did not know. I just listened to my mom, and then I was just lost. Um, so fast forward, that's the uh, career I wanted to pursue. And then, um, interestingly enough, you know, when Z and I got connected back to each other, she mentioned about College of Baruch in the city. Um, and it wasn't a college I would was interested in because it wasn't like an IT focused school. It was a business accounting school, and I didn't see myself in that type of environment, but come to find out it's perfect because, um, I didn't want to get too technical in it. And, but I wanted to understand the business aspect and the, the, the the strategic thinking of it. And that's the field I am now. So Baruch set me up perfectly to fit in the road I am now, which I am a, um, strategic planning analyst, not analyst, sorry, strategic planning lead and a portfolio manager. Um, so yeah. So what, what, what does that job entail? Like, what do you do? Because. So. Yeah. Like. So from the portfolio manager perspective, basically I manage, um, the investment of IT projects. So we have an annual planning phase where we plan the budget for the following year. And basically we prioritize and align our goals and initiative with all of tech, right? So basically we have a theme where we're, um, um, if we have a theme where we're trying to, you know, like, it's the, yeah, I know. Okay. Sorry about that. So we just, uh. I guess we'll, we'll share a little bit. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, so while we were while I was talking, we just uh, the doorbell rang and we just got a shipment of uh, glass the containers for bo- bottles for Amu Beauty. So I'm yes, so happy and so excited and so nervous because we got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, guys, um, if you haven't heard um, or know already that you know. Z and I were launching a skincare line, Amul mm-hmm. Beauty. Um, you can check it out at A M M U B E U T Y. B E A U T Y. Sorry. <laughs> Beauty.com. Yes, okay. Amulbeauty.com. Obviously, I can't spell. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, feel free to um, register for emails. Forget to get, um, you know, latest updates. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I was saying, um, where did I leave off at? Um, um, what you do at your job? Oh yeah, so yeah, so the portfolio manager, so I manage the investments of, of of IT projects, initiative aligned to our strategic uh, goals. Um, so you know, if it's either migrating to the cloud or whatnot, uh, basically we ma- I manage the funding to for the resources for the consultant, for the software, hardware, whatever it may be. And uh, we ensure that the investment is is sound and is something that's uh, sort of going to be um, basically get our, our ROI on that investments to ensure that we deliver all the deliverables that's at hand. So, yeah. So that is your um, bread and butter, like your nine to five. 
Yes. And do you like like what you do? Oh yeah, I love what I do. The company I'm with is 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 awesome. The people I work with are fantastic. It's like it's not a hostile environment. Um, you know, unlike <laughs> I was just gonna say, <laughs> unlike your you. nine to five. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a pleasure to work there. Um, I have no complaints with anyone I work with. So it's 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 a good environment. I can't complain to be honest. Great. Um, okay. So that puts us to kind, almost kind of present day, but there's still a lot more within that. Okay, so quickly for me, my background, um, obviously I went to Baruch, like Khabib mentioned, um, and I went in through um, the summer. So there was like a special program. I went through the summer of graduating high school, and um, I... I knew how good the college was. If you're from New York or you are in the financial industry, um, Baruch College is is extremely well known within the businesses and within the firms um, in its equivalent to the Columbia Business School, NYU Business School, things like that, um, but just way more affordable. So, you know, I think with Habib and myself as well, as we went on through our careers, we were always alongside people that graduated from Columbia Business School, that graduated from NYU, that graduated from Fordham. Fordham um, yeah. All of that um, was really cool to see um, because I originally went to Brooke because my dad said that it was the best place to go. And me being me, I was like, yes, Baba, yeah, I'll do whatever you but say. But you were originally going to go for accounting. Yeah. So, OK. So, yeah, let's backtrack. Um, it's it's very well known for accounting. Um, so the, the, the big accounting firms in the world are all basically housed in New York as their main headquarters. And they all... Again, go to the NYU's, the Baruch's, the the Columbia's, the Fordham's, and they and they get their people from there. So that was kind of a foolproof um, path for me that my dad thought. Right? It's accounting. It's like an, it's like a, it's like a very foolproof job. Right? You'll you'll land a very good job because we're I'm connected to people that work in these big um, accounting firms, and that's just going to be my life. So exactly what Habib said, make sure you do an internship at where you want to spend the rest of your life doing. And so I did an internship at ENY. I did an internship at Tishman. I did an internship. Um, what other accounting internships did I do? I don't know. But I hated it. <laughs> I loved the people I worked with. I thought it was so much fun, like, you know, getting dressed up, going into the city, working with people, having fun, working late hours during tax season, ordering food, like going to office parties. It was amazing. But when you shave down all of that nitty gritty, glamorous things, um, you're left with your job. And I hated everything about accounting. It was very cookie cutter. It was, there's no like, you can't zhuzh it up. You can't put your own spin to it. You can't put any creativity into it because it's, does your numbers tick and tie? True. That's what it is. And I went ahead and was like, you know what? I'm going to do tax accounting because that way I can learn the loops and the, the everything within the commercial side of things. And as creative as that could have gotten, it was still ticking and tying numbers. And I literally hated my life. And so And you were you were not a big math person. I wasn't, but it, accounting is something different because it's like you don't really need to be a math person. It was that you just ticked and tied your number. You mm-hmm. just had to like mm-hmm. cuz I'm I sorry to interrupt you, but I'm a math person and, and accounting was one of the careers I was going to pursue too as well, which is funny. Yeah, so the the reason why I loved accounting is because one of the reasons why I actually did love accounting is because um, I could always check myself. Like it was never like, oh, I wonder how I did on the test. Oh, I wonder if my numbers are right. No, it's like foolproof. You just literally take and tie. You just have to memorize the rules and, and do it. So it wasn't hard for me. It wasn't thrilling for me. So anyway, long story short, I was in this internship and um, I took a HR class, human resources class. And I had the most amazing teacher (laughs) ever. This was my last year at Baruch. And he was just so amazing. He worked for one of the biggest law firms in the world. And um, him and I really um, connected because we would just talk about things. And 
and you know like what's happening current events and I would always do these projects above and beyond like what he expected and so he's like you know like why don't you like you're so good at human research you're such a people person and you have this business acumen to you why don't you do human resources you can take all of your business knowledge and you can take all of your people person knowledge and put it together and be super successful so that was a very hard conversation to have with my dad who um i did the five-year accounting program at baruch which is extremely hard and vigorous um but i did it and at the last literally the last year of baruch um i switched my major to human resources so to an immigrant father Mm -hmm. who's never worked a corporate job who's an entrepreneur himself he's never worked a corporate job he's just like hr human resources what you want to take attendance like you want to count sick days do they actually do work yeah do they do work but what's crazy is the two people that would stay behind at work and work late were the finance people which is like accounting finance and the HR people. They were like, you would go to like the copy room and it would always be an HR person or a finance person that worked late. So, you know, my dad was respectful. He said like, I might not think this is the right path for you, but if this is something that you want to do, go ahead. I also landed one of the top two law firms of the world full-time job as HR. So he was just like, okay, fine. Maybe there's something there. Um... So I started doing that. Um, It was, the job was amazing. I was doing great, but the people there, it was just like a bullying. Like it was just a lot of things that were not good there that I don't even want to talk about because it's just not okay. And I ended up quitting that job. Yeah. I mean, even though it was um, not the environment you pictured, but it it was an experience Mm -hmm. that, that, I, I learned would, so much. Yeah, that I would say that it it added to your success. Right. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and also having that name on my resume really catapulted all the other roles that came after that. So then I, I started working at a um, investment firm, a technology investment firm, um, who built these platforms to trade on. And it was amazing. It was such a great job. I think that was like the most it was like one of the best times of my career because I was working at this mid-size small slice mid-size financial firm where money was flowing in so I was able to be creative in my role so we had internship programs where we could spend money on we had um trips that we could go on we had these amazing um programs that I could cultivate and I created for for the employees and these meditation groups that I could spend money on to bring to to the to the firm so I was using a lot of my creativity to um, pivot this whole financial space where we kind of transformed into a like um what's that word like it's beyond work like what is it We focused on mental health. We focused on exercise. We focused on well-being. There you go. It was like a well-being kind of thing. So I basically took my career from just HR to now being like the well-being person of this firm. So everyone kind of came to me. I kind of ran these programs and did a lot of stuff. Okay. Then I thought it was my time to change careers because I got a really great opportunity at another huge, this was so much bigger than where I came from, financial um, firm. And um, this was in the healthcare side. So it was a financial firm, but I was managing the benefits side of things. Meaning if you are working somewhere, you have health insurance, you have dental insurance. I'm the one that manages all of that. Um, but I would do it for the international side. So international offices. So um, London, Spain, Brazil, Germany. Germany. Uh, I started doing APAC at the last the last few months, which was horrendous because, oh, Canada. Um, so yeah, that's just basically what I did. And I loved my job. If I could if I could take away all of the BS that came with my job, meaning the ecosystem of people, mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved my old boss. As soon as he left, things literally went so left. 
I had both my pregnancies um, at this job and it was such a mentally draining place. Mm -hmm. I had so many complications throughout my pregnancy that were stress related. um, And it was just like no respect, basically. Gotcha. Um, One thing I want to add during your story is you forgot to mention before you switched to HR you realize that you didn't want to do accounting, but you were going to consider nursing at one point. Oh, yeah. So you were going to do the... Accelerated. Event, accelerated, yeah. Nursing program. Yeah. And then that's when you met your professor who was like, oh, you're perfect for, for HR. Mm. And I remember you just... Because you were like... You were like down. Lost. Yeah, you were down. You were lost at the time. Because I found myself... I was like, oh, this is... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, you know... I'm ready to start my career. I got, yeah. I had like two in, two or three internships. Yeah. I was like, this is it for me. And then you were like, I don't know if I want to do accounting. Um, and I kind of, I kind of took my accounting mentality and spread it across all businesses because I thought no matter what I did, it would be as boring as accounting. So that's why yeah. I, I thought of nursing because I'm like, oh, I love to help people. Yeah. I yeah. love to talk to people. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can see blood and yeah, like this girl would faint when she sees blood. I legit faint, you guys. And I think it's like an actual thing. Like if you see blood you faint. But So I asked, I was like, You sure you want to do that? Aya thing? cut her knee like last summer, like she was walking and she trips and she cuts her knee and I'm literally like pale <laughs> and I'm like I'm, I'm, and it wasn't even like really like that it was just like a little bit of blood but yeah that definitely was not have been a good so yeah so so the you know the reason why i pointed that out and you know same thing happened to me in my my you know my story is that you know um you guys should try as much you know different career choices until you find like something that calls yeah yeah something that calls for you um the the one advice too i would say is don't just go to school just to go to school you know you may have your mind made up made up but experience different clubs network with other people mm. internship because you never know what you else you'll be uh, you're fine you never know what you'll be exposed to that may be your calling mm. so you know z and i we were you know it wasn't a straight path for neither of us and i don't think it should be I mean, granted, some people have their mind made up, straight path, but I feel like I always want the opportunity to explore different options. Just so in the back of my mind, I said, okay, you know what? I did this option, this option. I didn't like it. I didn't like that. I didn't like this. But I do love this, right? So I did find this place where I love to be. Yeah, I think I don't and I don't want to tell another person's story. But like my brother was the same same thing, same thing where he went to college because that was the right thing to do. He went to law school because that was the right thing to do. And then he was like, you know what, I'm gonna start my own business. And now he's running a super successful business. And he couldn't have done it if he didn't go through that path in life. Um, if he if he would have just listened and put his head down and did what he was told, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so now we're both in these nine to five careers and there was still something missing for us, right? That our life was successful uh, according to society. Yes. It was, you have a great successful job. You Success in society is counted as money, right? You're bringing home a very good, decent amount Zarifa's bringing home a very good, decent amount. You guys are successful. You're young. You don't have any kids. You're living the life. Like, super successful. But there was just something still missing. Missing, Um, And I think we both just have such an entrepreneurial... Entrepreneurial... Is that how you say it? Mindset where it was like, I don't really want to be working for someone else. Like... Yeah, we it's like we took a step back and we were like, this can't be life. Yeah. This can't be happiness. Um, we felt it was, we got so, when we got our careers, we got our own place. We were super excited. Oh my God, this is going to be our life, blah, blah, blah. But it was a, 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 a routine. It was yeah. wake up at the same time. Go, um, you know, take the transportation to work. Same thing. Come back. 
And it just wasn't fulfilling it, to us no, or wasn't. stimulating to us mentally where we just wanted to do something else. So um, I think like let's fast forward to today where we turned YouTube into a business um, and we saw that even though we were juggling both of our full time jobs, we were s- successful at something for a full year and a half. Yes. And one thing I want to add too is that even though Z said it's a business, it was something we enjoy. And that's why we still keep doing, you know, YouTube, these podcasts, is because it's not, a, it's not a chore. Yeah. It's not a chore for us at all. It we, just happened to bring us yeah, we value. Found, we found our call. And again, it goes back to what I'm saying. Make sure you expose yourself to yeah. different, you know, opportunities. Because um, you never know what your calling is. And we, we, we actually talked about YouTube years ago before we uploaded our first video. And we were like, nah maybe later um but you know when we uploaded our wedding video caught traction we're like okay this could be something that yeah we and, and, to do. and at that time it wasn't it was just us um not looking at it as a financial benefit but looking at it as a way to express our creativity yes and i was nine months pregnant when we uploaded our first video um and it just catapulted from there but my my point in that is um it, that YouTube takes a lot of work and something that we would have never expected to be this much work. Um, but we were successful or we are successful in this industry because we stuck together through it. And and kudos to everyone that does YouTube and is super successful and they're by themselves because it really takes... Mm, yeah. Like those influencers, uh, people that do YouTube, people that do TikTok, people that do Instagram as their full time job. I know for a fact they work their butts off because this shit takes hours, way longer than a nine to five. And I'm seeing it firsthand having quit my job because we, we waited for probably a year and a half, almost two years for me to even take the step and quit our, my job because... We wanted to make sure it was something that was sustainable and something that could bring us a certain amount, um, uh, like a, a certain amount of success throughout the months for the years that that led to me quitting my job. Um, and it takes it, and it took us as a couple because this is what the podcast is about. Like, how did we take something like YouTube or our day jobs and become a successful life with it? Is we pushed ourselves, uh, both of us, and it was a lot of missed birthdays, a lot of missed hanging out time, a lot of missed, hey, we're all going to be doing this on vacation, like we're planning this vacation, come with us. And a lot of things that we couldn't, we couldn't do and we kind of put on hold because we really put all of our eggs into something like YouTube. Um, and as hard as a sacrifice was right then and there, when we look at hindsight, we're so glad that we did something like that because it really, um, we really pushed ourselves and it's very easy to give up. And I think within the first year or two, if we would have given up even for two months, three months, it would have really shot down the algorithm and I don't think we would be where we are now. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, you know, this, this, what this situation, this principle can be applied to any sort of businesses too, mm-hmm. as well. Um, just keep going at it and, um, you know, make sure it's something you love to do. Like I said, this is not a chore for us. We mm-hmm. love doing it, even though it take requires a lot of time. It requires Hours, a lot of yeah. effort. This is something we love to do. And then your comments, your feedback, your love just, yeah. you know, just excites us to do this even more. Right. And I think that's like the main reason why we even continue this is because your love and support just and, and just just your curiosity and your questions. It's so many questions because people are curious um, and we want to be there for you guys, too, as well. Yeah. And we so, don't have anybody. Sorry. Yeah. And and so, OK, so now we have YouTube and Habib has you want to talk about like investing. You want to talk about the, the extra surplus money that you have, like what you did with it to kind of. So so Habib is, is very analytical. He's the money person behind the scenes. He he kind of 
knows what to do with our money. He tells me like, this is our budget for the month. This is what we need to do because that that's just what he's really good at. And another key point to our successful relationship and life is you need somebody or someone or you can be that person that really looks at the bigger picture or the runway that I like to say the runway that we have and five years from now what we're doing today right now with our money can we make it last or or exponentially grow the success in the next five years so you want to talk about how you just like touch on like what you yeah yeah, so basically, you know... Without getting into, like, the nitty-gritty. No, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like Z said, I, 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 I handle, like, the whole financial aspect. So basically, um, reinvest our earnings because the thing is, the money sitting in your savings account is not making you that much money, right? Your your your, your money saving in your savings account is based on a, a low interest rate where, meanwhile, you can... Um, you know, invest your money into something that could be um, to help you set up for retirement or can set up a reincurrent, another additional reincurrent income. So, so look to create a sort of safety financial cushion for us, right? And our my goal at the time when we first got our career was to retire earlier than the the average or the standard. What it was like sixty five mm-hmm. at the time. Um, yeah, so basically set up a retirement, but then it basically it it took another foe to, hey, you know, pretty good at this. If I you know do a lot of more research and stuff like that, I can um, create additional sort of income or safety cushion for us to to rely on. But yeah, so and uh, what you're doing with the investment side of things is just another stream of residual income that we're, we're we have and even with um yeah my, I, mean, I mean i wouldn't call it residual income because i don't touch it but anyways but yeah um <laughs> even with my side of like social media there are so many um other streams that are coming in which is affiliate programs which is me trying to build my own brand um and i think for us, for our relationship, what works is just having multiple, and you always hear this multiple streams of income, but multiple streams of income. And um, I feel like it's like grounding ourselves, right? Like, yeah. where can we put our feet or our roots? That's more to me than money is like the roots. Where can we embed our roots? Whether it's your investment, whether it's property investment, whether it's stock investment, whether it is affiliate programs, whether it is having my roots in another company, whether it is now building Amu Beauty from the ground up. It's where can we plant our seeds and our roots so our children um, can can have this life that we've always imagined, which is time, right? Where can we live in a life where we have an abundance of time spent together rather yes. than buying a Yes. Ten million dollar house. Like yes. I just want that's, us to have time together. That's, that's one, what the main that's goal is. One thing you can never get back is is the time. Yeah. And that's what me that's where it clicked in Z and I's head when we were, you know, when we were young. And when I was born, it was like wait, I have to go back to work. You have to go back to work. We're gonna lose all this time, um, you know, trying to raise our daughter and it's like we want to be there for our kids as much as we can. Um, but, you know, it's just that nine to five was just getting in the way. Mm-hmm. And we're just losing that that family time that we mm-hmm. can spend together. So that clicked in our head. And it was like there could be a solution where we can enjoy what we do. And there's a financial um, opportunity. And at the same time, enjoy the time with our kids, too, as well. Yeah, we... Our main focus is to kind of let's like lasagna, I think, like let's just layer these different roots onto each other and build a foundation rather than, you know, we're just focusing on this and we're trying to extort as much money as we can from here. And maybe if we're successful, then we'll move on. I think it 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 for us and I keep I, the the word isn't like the tip of my tongue, but I just don't know it. But um it's just building a foundation, basically a successful foundation, which has layers and layers. Um, and I think we're that's what we're focused on. And it's it's 
how can we spend the most time with our family while being successful? And as we grow as a couple, our um, definition of success definitely changes. Um, because when we were younger, it was more money. That's all I want. I just want money. And then fast forward to a couple of years ago, it was like, I don't really want money. I just want to ha- be able to spend time yeah, with be, my family. Be happy. Be happy. That's yeah, it. That money doesn't make happy. me happy. Exactly. These material things don't mean anything to us. Um, but it's just how can we lead a life? Yeah, basically, we just keep saying the same thing. Um, so, yeah. Anything else you want to... Say, um, any advice you have for young couples out there? <laughs> any advice? Um, lean on each other. Yeah, lean on each other. Um, it's it's going to get dirty. It's going to get bumpy. Um, it's going to get tough. You know, you just have to fight through that. Yeah. And, um, you know, just see that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, always don't forget that. Because I remember when I was like literally lost in my majors and then going to school. And then I lost interest in school. And it just, once I found my passion, I was like, okay, I need to get that to, to that light at the end of the tunnel. And I need to do everything I can to get there. Even though I was working like literally full time um, when I was younger at the hospital, um, literally working hours and then also doing internships and at the same time doing full time school. It was really, mm-hmm. really, really tough. Um, but I stuck to it and then here I am today. So don't forget, you know, it's the bigger picture that you're aiming for, mm-hmm. right? Those all those little things that you're going through right now is going to be small mm-hmm. when you are happy later in life. Mm-hmm. And um, really hone in on your strengths and your partner's strengths and, and kind of ask each other, like, what what is your strength? Like, let's cut all the bullshit. Like, what are you really good at? What do you really want to do in life? And you'll be surprised at the answers where you think you know your partner, but you, you know, you really don't. And once you really get to know your partner, you can build something really beautiful. And um, once you have an established goal in mind, Um, it's just the matter of working through it and being consistent. I think consistency is just as hard of a work than hard work. Like consistency for me and what we're doing and building is the number one key to success for Mm -hmm. us. It's consistency. It is waking up every day and doing the shit that you need to do. It's even when you don't feel like waking up in the day, still doing the shit that you need to do and just take it a day at a time because yeah, you're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel and how hard it's going to be. Yeah, right. But if you just do that <clears throat> well, one day, just like working out, if that's my mentality. Like if I just do this one workout today, I'm going to worry about the summer body. I'll worry about that tomorrow. Yeah. What's that saying? Go, Rome wasn't built in one day, right? Yeah, exactly. Rome was not built in one it day. It took us I'm a, how many years for us to get here, right? So just, just keep that in mind. I was just talking to Boami yesterday and we were looking at our wedding picture on on the gallery wall and i was like wait what year was that and she said 2016 and i was like wow and we got married at, in 2014 hmm. 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 that's 7 years like time flies that's crazy 7 years married i mean it's like 16 years together 16 17 years together but mm-hmm. yeah work every day with each other not against each other every time there's a problem it's you both against the problem not you against the problem and your wife against the problem or whatever the case is so yeah yeah and i would say you know if your parents you know ensure that your kids understand you know success and hard work too as well mm-hmm. Um, just me understanding how difficult and hard it was for my dad to leave his country to come here just to have a better life for us, my, 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 me, my brother, my sister, and my mom, right? The sacrifices he made. Um, share those stories with your kids so they understand, you know, um, like not to take this life for granted. Right. Not everyone has that opportunity that my my, my dad did. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know, be open with your kids, too, so they can understand how important school is and how important it is to, um, you know, have a career and find find their their passion. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's all we got for you. 
Thank yeah. you guys for watching. We will see you guys in the next one. Peace, Bye. guys. And let us know, comment below uh, your thoughts, um, you know, your success stories. want to hear them too as well. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to drop a comment below. Yep. See you guys. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget, hit that subscribe button just right there so you stay up to date to all the content that we post to our channel. And don't go anywhere yet because we have way more where that came from. Like this video right here that we handpicked just for you.